All right, everybody, welcome back to Summa Demo Day. Jakob Shi, CMO of Robonomics, in the house tonight. Jakob, welcome. Yep. Hey, um, thanks for having me. Um, yep. Uh, I've been. Uh, You're very welcome. Yep. Go ahead. I'll give you the stage. And uh, I'll, I'll head out here for you to open the presentation, and the stage is yours. I guess I've got some issues with my internet connection, so give me a sec, I'll try to fix this. Um, everything should be fine now, but um, if something goes- Yeah, it looks good. Chat, okay, okay, great, thanks. So um, yeah, my name is Jakub. Uh, I'm contributing to the growth of Robonomics since October 2020. And today uh, I'm going to represent Robonomics Developers DAO on this uh, event. Um, so let me share the screen. Can you see it? I hope so. So yeah, it looks good. Okay, great. So uh, core developers have been working on the intersection of Web3 and IoT technologies for around six years. And Robonomics is a cloud-like decentralized platform for controlling cyber physical systems such as robotics and IoT devices, or even complex systems such as small factories, hubs, and so on. For those who are not familiar with Robonomics, I'll make a short traction overview of the team. So <clears throat> first of all, the main difference between Robonomics and other IoT projects is that instead of building a separate standalone chain, core developers decided to build the platform on top of other uh, decentralized, established, public blockchains such as Ethereum and Polkadot. From uh, 2015 to 2019, Robonomics was developing on top of Ethereum as a second layer solution. Uh, the, team, the team didn't explore any other blockchains and kept building on top of Ethereum. As in 2016, none could expect that the Serenity update will be released in 2022. And before the DEFCON 5, Robonomics was ready to provide cyber physical systems with access to the digital economy through Ethereum. But Robonomics, developer, and Robonomics developers have been uh, following Robonomics, uh, following Polkadot since ICO, but didn't build anything uh, before the beginning of 2019. And in the first quarter of 2019, Robonomics seems to post that the bandwidth and gas fee issues of Ethereum will be solved by a new innovative heterogeneous blockchain Polkadot. Uh, with, with Substrate, developers can rely on the shared security feature of the relay chain and focus on another important aspect, building their parry chains for bringing new features to the ecosystem through decentralized applications. Uh, Robonomics joined the Kala and ASTAR networks for the first parachain party on Rococo version one back in August, 2020. Uh, Robonomics parachain features available through Robonomics Web Services subscription are PopSop for collecting telemetry from IoT and robotics devices based on IPFS protocol, data log for putting uh, data into uh, blockchain basically and launch function for controlling uh, devices by turning them on and off. Uh, core, core developers connected the most widely used robotics framework and public blockchains. The robot operating system, ROS for short, is a flexible framework for writing robot software. ROS is a collection of tools, libraries and conventions that aim to simplify the task of creating complex and robust robot behavior across a wide variety of robotics devices. As you can see, there are 1 million monthly users from China, USA, India, Germany, Korea, and other advanced countries. And those are mostly robotics and IoT engineers that use ROS for creating robotic software. Uh, to cover opportunities of this technological stack, I'll mention a few examples. Um, First of all, the uh, Boston Dynamics SDK course that was created by Robonomics and ITMO University for robotics developers, 
where in the final lessons, students will have to control a physical robot dog spot by Boston Dynamics using Robonomics Perichain. And as a, as a result, they will get a certificate with a, with a log of the robot attached to the, um, to the certificate. Also, another important use case that is worth mentioning is the uh, digital twins for smart leasing. Uh, there is an industrial manipulator that has been operating in manufacturing facility in the United States for four months with an hourly wage. Uh, another use case is digital passports. Um, it's utilized by uh, New Zealand's agriculture startup, startup uh, and also by uh, another hardware manufacturing startup that created an automated workstation for video recording of the assembly process and testing of complex technical products. Um, to dive deeper into those use cases, I recommend you to read an article that covers the latest achievements of the team by scanning the QR code. I, I hope it works. Um, if it's not, please let me know after the uh, presentation. Uh, today, I'll focus on urban sensors network that is deployed for tracking air pollution. Uh, it's, it's one of the non-commercial experiments made by Robonomics developers uh, using IPFS and substrate-based blockchain. Uh, and it's taking place right now in Robonomics developers' hometown, Russian industrial city, Tulyati, with 700,000 population. Thanks to the local businesses, it became possible to cover city with SDS sensors using advertising billboards. Uh, the main feature of this project is its local community-driven nature. Citizens of Taliati and Aero Lab uh, together collaborate to maintain this. All data collected by the Urban Sensor Network is securely recorded in the Robonomics Perichain to avoid any interventions in the measurement history and provide security from disabling this um, network. Uh, data comes to the map from the peer-to-peer -peer channel. It is uh, displayed um, on, on, on the map from the uh, Robonomics Perichain for further, and, and also it's stored in the Perichain for further analysis. Um, so I will just go to the demo part. But before I'll get to the subscan, I'd love to quote uh, Sergey's recent tweet. Uh, there are more than 150,000 blocks in the Robonomics Frontier network and more than 50,000 transactions made by IoT devices. And the next target of the team is for, for, for the next 100,000 blocks to have more IoT enabled extrinsics than the amount of blocks. So let's get to the chain. I I'll open the latest random block and just go through the extrinsics and see what's happened. So uh, here we can see weather from uh, Onkavito, weather, weather, weather. OK. And another type of telemetry from uh, probably from a robotics device, not sure. Uh, let's try another one. Okay, so the main thing here is that we, we can see that uh, those blocks um, actually store um, data um, interactions with data log functions of the Robonomics parity chain. Uh, and it's used to write data into, into, into the chain. So now let's get to the sensor network and actually see uh, how it works on the front end. I will like choose random sensor. And uh, as you can see, I can um, see the historical data that was collected while, while I have this tab open, but also I can access the data that is stored in the parry chain. But uh, I'll do that a bit later. Uh, also, I mentioned the mobile tracking station. So here it is. It actually moves um, on the map. And let's do an experiment and see how it works. Uh, I prepared this uh, account and this hash to actually show you how this is displayed on the uh, map. 
So it's all is historical data that is stored in the uh, Robonomics parachain. And as you can see, the uh, mobile station is moving across the city and we can see all the measurements that is doing on its way while it's patrolling the city. And also I can download this data in the CC format to actually um, to analyze it. But I guess I need to uh, change the screen on seconds. And now you should see my entire screen. And here are the measurements that uh, were provided and stored in the Robonomics parachain chain by the um, mobile station, right? Sensor ID, sender, geo, and the um, different measurements. That's it from me. I guess I can uh, get to the uh, questions part. And Sugi just shared the link to wiki page of the uh, Core Robonomics Developers hometown. Yeah, uh, if we don't have any further questions, I think that's it for me. Uh, hey Jakob, there's uh, there's a couple, there's two questions in the question uh, box. If you could start with those, uh, do you yeah, see absolutely. the box? Oh oh, ask question. Yeah, I see. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, ha have you looked at Helium, uh, the People's Network, and their involvement with Lorvan Tech and the IoT? How does it differ from uh, Robonomics? To be honest, I didn't really deeply uh, look into Helium, but it's something that Sergey will answer, I guess. He's in the chat and uh, probably he will help with this question. And the second one, I would like to know what the difference between Robonomics and Nodal or Helium. Okay. As far, yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say at this point. Uh, you, you're muted. I can hear you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're we're back. Okay. Um, oh, let me fix my headphones here. Okay. Great. Um, so, what are you most excited about right now? Uh, from you know, in the next few months, on what your team is is building out. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess the the Boston Dynamics SDK course is is something really important because. Uh, we actually have a physical Boston Dynamics spot in the robotics walking in San Francisco. Uh, and, uh, you know, th there is a community of robotics developers that actually uh, building something with it. Besides, we also have a lot of applications from developers all, all over the world to uh, get access to a physical robot and actually play with it because, uh, you know, th there are not much info on the... Uh, on the Boston Dynamics SDK from the Boston Dynamics, and they don't provide like access to to a physical robot, and we are literally the the first team who who do something like that. And um, also, th there are other um, environmental use cases with um, with the water drones that actually help to that that, that will help to measure uh, water pollution in harbor cities, what, what, which is really important. That's really cool. And can you talk a little bit about uh, the crowd loan going on right now? And you know, as, as the marketing officer, um, ways in which the community is helping uh, get involved and, and that you've been looking at to help bring awareness to that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, in, in terms of crowd loan, uh, developers decided to uh, keep the previous parameters of the crowd loan model, but now uh, you can get up to 6XLT for uh, bonding your KSM uh, for Robonomics in this crowd loan campaign. And uh, you will get 50% of that uh, in the Genesis block of the Robonomics parachain on Kusama. And the uh, another half of the reward will be uh, provided to you through staking. Great. And um, did I see that you guys had also released some NFTs as well? Yeah, um, that was, I, I guess you mean the Gakachu, right? The Robin Painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I saw. Right. So uh, the, there is a robot, a QQ manipulator, that actually uh, can analyze Twitter sentiments and, um, you know, draw something based on the most popular tweets in the Twitter and issue NFT of that. I mean, of the painting, of, of the video record of how it paints. Mm -hmm. uh, and personally, I'm super bullish on this, but uh, developers are like, don't want to hype on NFTs. So that's why um, they're not doing this. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And, um, you know, can, if you were to give a vision of, uh, you know, the full workings of the company five years from now, you know, actually integrated into real world society at, from somebody that didn't uh, really understand blockchain and hopefully at that point, you know, all of that's sort of on the back end and, and um, people don't really yeah. care. Maybe you could talk about, you know, what you see the vision of, of the company uh, years down the road. Yeah, uh, well, developers uh, really value the education and the academic approach to development. So I'm quite sure that in five years, we will see something like Robonomics Institute that will, you know, take software developers and educate them on how to use Web3 technologies to solve the most important issues of Internet of Things industry, which is security. And it's easily solved by blockchains because there is no single point of failure. There is no, uh, there is no one entity that controls all the data, such as Amazon, Web so Amazon and Amazon Web Services. And uh, besides, Web3 technologies will like, provide those cyber physical systems with an opportunity to uh, be autonomous economic agents and interact between each other and with humans using uh, those atomic transactions that combine technical and economic information in one transaction. And all of these things, they're, they're super hard to understand on the technical level. I, I'm not like super tech savvy person, but I, I do understand the upper level um, things. And all those uh, technical stuff will be explained in the Robonomics Institute. And I guess people who will go through this, even if they won't build their own applications on top of Robonomics, they will go to uh, different corporations and they will like shield this from from the inside because you know there, mm -hmm. there's a problem and you, you need to somehow solve it but you don't know how mm -hmm. but then oh right i i saw that in the robonomics institute so i guess something mm -hmm. like that will happen in five years with robonomics very cool yeah i'm looking forward to to seeing that um i'd love to go to the institute and uh yeah very cool Jacob. well thank you so much for taking the time to come on today, uh, great demo, and looking forward to uh, to going to that in two years from now. But also to see the updates from Robonomics in the coming months. Thank you very much for having me. Have a great one. Thank you so much. Sure.